Welcome back. Welcome back to take three of episode 24 of the Brandon Alper experience. Took me fucking forever to finally get the right take. And I truly do believe that this is the right take because I'm trusting the process. I'm not a Sixers fan, but I'm just going to say that now. I tried to film the first take of the uh, of this episode and the reason why I didn't like it even though I was posting it on Snapchat posting it on Instagram saying that I was going to post it I looked back at it and I was just I realized that I was speaking based off of a script that I had in front of me and I feel that the best way for me to do these episodes is me just going on and on and on about shit that just pops up in my head because I feel like the best part of these episodes is just the naturality, if that's a word, of them. And when it says, or when I say, now we are going to talk about this. Now we are going to talk about this. I hate having a list. It just throws me off, especially when I'm listening to it. So when I show that to a friend and they say something to me about it and they're like, yeah, Brandon, I I, I really don't think you should be reading off a list. I'm I'm going to take their advice because if I say the same thing and then another person says the same thing, it's like, okay, now there's actually an issue here. It's not just me that has a problem with it. And I've noticed that because I've tried multiple times to do episodes with writing down shit. I know I did one with the one with Lauren and then another one with, I think, some girls in the past. And every single time that I try to do it, it just ends up fucking me up because I feel as if... I try so hard to, you know, think of these certain topics that I just have these set topics in my head and that's the only thing that I want to talk about and when I just have my brain, the possibilities are limitless. So I was, uh, like I was talking to my mom one night and I explained that to her why I didn't post the episode and she was like, because my mom's a singer she'll sing at country clubs, all that kind of stuff. And she said to me, Brandon, when I try to sing and I look at my notes or when I look at papers, try to like to look at lyrics, then it just like throws me off for some reason. But if I just trust my brain and I just know that I can do it, then I'm going to be completely fine. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Because I mean, I... I know that if you put a certain amount of songs on for me, I will know every single lyric to them. Regardless of how long it's been since I've listened to them, I know for a fact. If you throw on Go to the Moon, if you throw on probably some little Uzi song, I'm going to get every single lyric. And I'm just going to say this now. I love Lil Uzi. I've been really weirded out and just like kind of disappointed in him recently because... I don't I don't know what he's doing with the whole skin bleaching shit. But he's just kind of been corny to me recently and I don't like to be judgmental. I don't like to be, you know, weirded out by people's character, but he's just been odd to me and I mean that because I'm kind of concerned for him because I was such a big fan for the guy. Like he I felt as if in 2016, 2017, 2018 He definitely was making music for himself, and I could tell that, you know what I mean? Because I just feel as if when people are comfortable with making the music that they're making, you can tell because they put extra love in it. But now, I mean, he said it himself, he didn't like Eternal to take, and then his other music that he's waiting, people have so high expectations for that he's afraid to release it, to break it. Like, to to break those expectations, or and people are just going to end up disappointed in him. And... I could tell, like, I literally can tell that because it just seems as if he's trying too hard to make good music rather than the music that he wants to make that he's just fucking himself up. And, I mean, you could say the complete opposite for Playboy Cardi. He's just doing the exact thing that he wants to do, and it's doing so well because of that, if that makes any sense. And, I mean, look at Playboy Cardi. He's one of the most successful rappers on the face of the earth right now, and he's completely blown up, best tour of all time, like, Okay, I don't know, obviously, but one of the greatest tours of all time, and he's in the news almost every day because of either playing PlayStation with Lil Uzi while his girlfriend is literally having a baby and then other shit. You know, the dude is just a character. That's that's all I have to say. And speaking of Playboy Cardi, I, I went to Kentucky 
And I, yeah, I went to Kentucky this weekend to see my parents. Well, I, I went to go see my dad and then my sister ended up coming and then my brother also lives in Kentucky. So I got to see all of them, which is amazing. I always say that every single time that I see, you know, I live with my mom, but I, I love my mom. I see her every single day. However, it's always nice to see the other people in your family. And my sister said this, and I noticed this after she said this to me. She said, I always mentally feel better whenever I see you. Um, and I was like, exactly the same thing. Because, you know, when you when you see your family, you guys know each other. You, you are literally blood related. So there's just some sort of connection when everyone gets together and you all see each other. So, I mean, it's it's just nice. So I went to Spencer's in the mall, and I saw this shirt. It says... Uh, Let's summon demons. It's one of the Steven Rhodes shirts. I fucking love this dude. I don't know who he is, but I just know that he makes these like t-shirts from Spencer's of kids just doing evil shit. And then it's, you know, supposed to look like playtime fun type stuff. And I just think they're hilarious. And it was funny because I bought this shirt completely unrelated just because, you know, I liked it. And it has the pentagrams on the arms. I am not a Satan worshiper, by the way. I pray to God, so I'm guessing that means that I believe in God. I'm not sure if that's automatically what that means, but I'm pretty positive that's what that means. So I I remember because my one friend, Jack, fucking loved the dude to death. I need to have him on the pod at some point. I mentioned him so many times throughout these episodes. He said to me one time, he was like, do you remember in eighth grade, ninth grade, when your Instagram account was Satan Alper? And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. Yes, I do remember that. And the reason why it was that was because it was Santa Alper when it was Christmas. And then once Christmas was over, I thought I wanted to be funny and go, oh, I'm Satan Alper. Like, I was a fucking weirdo. Still am. But I remember one time I did something terrible. And then I got my phone taken away. And my mom saw the alerts on my phone from Instagram and was like, who is Satan Alper? And I was like, oh, Jesus. And she was like, yeah, I'm going to need you to change that. Yeah, I will, Mom. I, I gotcha. I gotcha. I, I wasn't even mad when that happened. Uh, that was funny as fuck. But other than that, it's a good day. It's a good day outside. It was a nice day outside today, actually. I, uh, I wore my cool Nike sweatshirt that I got. It has, like, f- fluorescent embroidered. Ah, God, I'm going to wear it for one of these episodes, but... I don't know. I do love clothes. I've explained that to you guys so many times. And I like fluorescent, you know, embroidered, pretty looking shit. And I've started to buy clothes that were a little bit bigger on me just because I like the way that it fits. Because, like, I'm a skinny, short dude. You know, no matter what, I'm always going to have a lean gut. I don't sip lean, but I just always joke. If I have a gut, I call it a lean gut because of Playboy Cardi. But I like to eat. You know what I mean? And one of my favorite places to go is always Waffle House. And I just went there because earlier I had a fucking splitting headache. Actually, this will go into why I haven't uploaded an episode or why I haven't done this episode while take two failed. So I was doing take two and I was trying to have this no excuses mindset. You know what I mean? So I sat down and I tried to talk And then I just had a splitting fucking headache. And I don't know why I had the splitting headache. You know what I mean? And then I tried, I tried doing things and nothing would work. You know, I was trying push-ups and all that kind of stuff. And then I texted my friends. I was like, there is a national emergency right now because I tried to do this episode and it's not working. And I tried other shit. It's not working. And whenever I can't do something that I love or whenever I can't do something that I really want to do, it bothers me. So what do I do? I don't want to make the same mistake that I did when I was at college. All of my friends are gone, basically. Well, not all of them, but a lot of my friends are gone. So I texted my friends who are at college, which is practice for me when I'm at college. Um, and I said, I'm in a national emergency. But my one friend was like, drink a, like, drink a bottle of water, drink water. And then right before he texted that, I'd fucking down a bottle of water, automatically felt better. But then I was like, okay, I need to do something. Like, I need to eat something. So I decided to go to Waffle House because I've been on a Waffle House kick. I don't know what it is about that food, but the butter that they put on the bread and then they fucking cook the bread and it it gets thick 
and then the cheese melts into it, and then the bacon adds the crunch onto the sandwich, and then the softness of the egg and the softness of the melted cheese. Oh my God, it is, it's one of the greatest sandwiches I've ever had in my life. That sandwich that I just had when I went to Waffle House at two in the morning, fucking three, four hours ago. I'm doing this at six in the morning, by the way. I was, the people probably thought I was high. Like, you know how when someone is high and you see them eating their food and their eyes are just like very low and you could tell they're in a state of flow because they're just enjoying their food so much. Like, that's exactly what that was. That usually only happens to people when they're high. I can't even say that. But I was in that, and the the lady came up to me while I was eating. She was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I am beyond okay right now. This is one of the greatest sandwiches I've ever had. And she was like, she started giggling, started laughing to me. So she definitely thought I was gone. She thought I was Ubered. But uh, other than that, yeah, I fucking love... Waffle House, and I love food, and no matter what with the linga, um, I'm still going to continue eating. Back on to the uh, clothes, though. I like loser, looser fitting clothes because it it's like less tight on you, and you can stretch your arms out because if you ever watched the episodes, earlier episodes, I've always wore kind of like tighter fitting clothes because I just thought it like would, you know, make me look bigger, make me look skinnier. I mean, it doesn't even fucking matter because it really depends on like, I realized this about fashion because I, I realized this after the Chiron episode, which was like episode 12. I texted him because he said he knows a lot about fashion and he said that, no, it was something that I noticed You can't just wear a t-shirt with, like, any pair of pants, even if they match. It has to be a certain, like, bagginess or certain tightness of the pant or the tightness of the shirt. Like, for example, if I'm wearing a baggy shirt, I kind of have to wear, like, a tight pant in order to counteract it. Because if you wear an entire tight fit, you just look like you're going to burst at any second. You know what I mean? And I realize that. Like, I always love wearing kind of tight fitting shorts I love the short shorts and in order to do that you need a smaller size but like you know I have a decently skinny waist so I just I don't know I might be completely wrong and it probably is just me looking at the mirror and noticing that I'm doing something weird or doing something different and then I'm like oh well maybe I should do this but you know fashion is a weird thing for many people to talk about because a lot of people do care and then a lot of people just do not care what they put on and to be honest that's all their decision other than that I realized I think why I had the splitting headache and this is actually kind of a very funny story that I'm going to tell y'all I went bowling with some friends um and we all put up some beanie babies in order to see who uh, who won so my friend Ty put up money against his friend uh or his, our friend Blake, and then I put money up against our friend, or my friend Emily, and I was so pissed, because we played a round of four games, and I rolled like a 140, so I was up by like 30 pins on the first round on uh, Emily, and I know how bowling is, so I wasn't automatically cocky, but I was still shit-talking, because I'm gonna shit-talk regardless, you know what I mean? No matter what happens, I'm gonna do it. So, I'm absolutely chatting my ass off and then we have um and then the second game comes along and then I throw a strike but for some reason it counts as two strikes and it goes for Emily as a strike and you know I should have just been like I'll let you have it but nah I'm a competitive motherfucker and I asked the dude beside me and this threw me the fuck off off and I think this is what this is probably what gave me the headache and it probably is what ruined my bowling experience there was this dude who was standing next to us and I asked him I was like yo how do you uh, change the score and then he bro dude just started chatting like getting all pissed at me and you know I knew it immediately like the other people didn't know that the dude had an attitude at first but like I could tell immediately when the guy started talking all right this dude is pissed and like When I'm in a good mood and someone just starts acting really angry to me, it throws me off. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's with everybody. But a lot of people, if you're in a good mood and then they chat to you, then like you're going to get right pissed back at them. When I'm in a good mood and someone does that to me, that ruins my mood and I get like upset because it just goes from a good to opposite. 
And then like from that upset is when I get angry, but you have to do something after I'm upset in order for me to get angry. If you do something to me while I'm good and then I'm upset, I'm probably not going to do anything. But if you do anything while I'm upset, then I'll get pissed. If that makes any sense. So like if you take it one step further, then you might get some anger out of me. But like for the most part, I'll be fine. Um, but yeah, this dude just started fucking saying some bullshit, like really angrily trying to help me out. And then he was like, oh, well, you should take away the one pin that the guy got earlier. And I'm like, all right, bro. All right, bro. You got it. dog." <laughs> and like, I, I want to say that I wish that I started chatting back to the dude, but I'm glad that I didn't. Cause I don't want to start anything. And clearly the dude was not having a good day at the same time. So I can't get that pissed. But at the same time, like really, bro, you got to get that mad at fucking early college students or not early college students, but you know freshman college students so the entire time while we were playing like that threw us off probably for the next game because when something happens like that it's kind of hard to build it back up you know what I mean you can't just automatically go back to normal when there's someone who's absolutely an asshole to you so I mean I'm fucking heated and earlier that day or right when we got to the uh to the bowling alley, I just downed like five cups of water because while I was in Kentucky, I drank probably two gallons of water and then probably more than that, not going to lie. So I got like really used to drinking a lot of water. That was probably what gave me the headache because I went from drinking so much water to no water and that probably just threw me off, not going to lie. Do I know? That's a fact. I don't really know, but the water made me feel better. I got food in me. Then I was fine. And then I wasn't fine once I got back home. So then I got ibuprofen went to sleep, woke up 520. I have this no excuses mentality because I want to have an episode out by 7 p.m. Thursday, 520. I wash my face, brush my teeth, use mouthwash. And I was like, yep, fucking I'm making a podcast because now I'm actually in the mood to make a podcast. You know what I mean? I kind of was just forcing myself. And now I'm still, I don't want to use the word forcing myself, but like now I know that I'm capable of doing it, if that makes any sense. Back to the bowling story. We end up, you know, keep on bowling and that throws me off. And for some reason, like I know where to throw the ball from because I always throw the ball left. So if I adjust myself and I throw the ball from the right, then it gives me more of a chance to hit more pins, more of a chance to get strikes. You know what I mean? So I was doing that. But like even after that, that fucking threw me off. So I was trying to throw the ball from the right and I just could not do it anymore. And then fourth game comes and then it's like it's closing up, like closing up, closing up. And then my my friend gets a strike and then I get six pins and I don't even get a spare or something. And then she she goes up like 10 pins or 20 pins. And I'm like, fuck. So then 10th frame comes and I choke my ass off. And then she ends up hitting a strike right off the bat. Right, right off the bat on the 10th fucking frame. And I'm like, you've got to be joking. You know what I mean? Because I'm talking shit. 10 bucks is on the line. And, you know, I'm not going to lie. If I lose fair and square, I'm probably going to be pissed. You know what I mean? But when I choke that, I just get even more pissed. You know what I mean? So then I, I you know, I'm actually going to go into that and then I'm going to go back. There's, I have a choking problem. I don't know why. I don't know what it is, but I've noticed that I tend to choke a lot. And I remember having this conversation with Kendall, with my friend Taylor, with everybody, because I like to understand why I do the things that I do. I don't want to make people uncomfortable. I'm going to pull that pant leg up. I realized that I have a choking problem, and it's funny as fuck because I don't know if I mentioned this in other episodes, but I'm going to go into my choking problem, okay? If I'm up three to two in a game of Rocket League, I'm going to be fine. I'm probably going to win the game. If I'm up, or if I'm down three nothing, I'm probably going to come back and I'm going to win the game four to three. You know what I mean? Or five to four. Like I'm probably going to let up one goal, but I'm going to end up winning in the end. You know what I mean? I have the confidence in myself, but if I go down fucking or no, if I go up five to one, I always end up choking the game and I do not know why. And I know how stupid this sounds, but this happens in real life too. It'll, it's not just video games you know this will happen in madden not as much madden because i know what to do in madden enough to win so i think that might be where it all is like 
in bowling. I, I wanted to say that, oh, well, I started doing things different. Like, no, I did the exact same thing. It was just the other person just clutched the fuck up. You know what I mean? So there's also a clutch gene. I feel as if I don't have the clutch gene and I don't know why. Where does that come from? How do you cause the clutch gene is it you playing as if you're always the underdog as if you're always playing down below but that's hard for me because like when I know I'm up I either let up a little bit or I start doing stuff differently maybe I just need to do start doing shit normally keep doing my uh you know stick to the game plan stick to the playbook you know what I mean so that fucking pissed me off because every time I choke like I just I feel as if a part of me just dies inside and it fucking hurts me so bad because like, you know, at least I'm not choking in something that is meaningful. It's a $10 game of bowling. You know what I mean? I ended up losing by three pins. I'm not mad. I completely was congratulation, but I'm not going to lie. I was pissed. Like I was very angry. I was very mad, but you know, that anger only lasts for so long, especially when it's something like that. But I mean, even on to something else, I'm gonna, I was going to bring this up at some point, you know, I, I'm going to say this, I could have made seven grand off of Dogecoin, I could have made seven grand off of Dogecoin, and you know what, I was an idiot, and I held it until last week until I finally sold it, I'm not going to say how much I made, but I could have made fucking bread, seven grand, not would have had to worry about money, for a while because I'm a college student could have went out any night to get fucking grottos or to get five guys whatever it was but no I'm an idiot but you know what the weird thing is like I'm not even mad you know what I mean I could be mad but I still ended up making money at the end of the day so how pissed can I really be like I look at the money in my bank account at the end of the day and I'm like you know what I still made beanie babies how mad am I gonna be I cannot be that pissed so Obviously, I'm a little pissed because I could have made more money, but at the end of the day, I look at myself and I'm like, you know what? I'm not that mad because I took a gain, could have lost, didn't. So I end up going to, I end up like looking up Robin Hood because I'm not going to say I want to make that money back, but I try to Google fucking what options trading is and then buying and what stocks to buy, where to sell, bro. There is no shot I'm ever going to get in the stock market because I have way too much of like, I don't want to say an emotional connection to money and you're not supposed to have an emotional connection when it comes to stocks or just money in general, but I don't know when to sell. And I have such a, such a high hope for the future. I have such like positivity. I'm a, I'm a a positivist. I can't think optimist. That's the word. I'm such an optimist that I'm like, I look at shit and I always think that it's going to go up. There's no chance that I can put money into the stock market because that's not how the world actually works. So I feel as if stocks is definitely a good way to make money, but there's no shot that I'm ever going to actually try it because I know for a fact I'm going to make an emotional connection and I'm just going to lose fucking bread. So I've already made that assumption. Now, if I see something that's like cool and I have a feeling that it's going to go up, then yeah, I'll throw some beanies in it. But like other than that, I'm going to be fine. It was funny. I, uh, I was talking to my dad one night while I was in Kentucky and I was just saying random ass things uh, that would be constitute, uh, whatever the word would be, synonymous with uh, with dollars. And I was like, beanie, beanie babies. I don't know why, because I like, I said beans and I just added that onto it. I said doubloons, shillings, and pounds, quid, other shit. And I was like, tire irons. Well, I don't know why, but that was so funny to me. I do that all the time. I'll just come up with random shit to call stuff. And it, I don't know, it makes me laugh. It makes me jolly. I do love that word jolly too. I took a picture while I was at Waffle House. I was smiling while I was there because it makes me jolly. And then I put jolly as the caption because I was jolly. But other than that, back to bowling. I I ended up losing, paid the $10 up. I was pissed. And then we ended up leaving. And that was when the headache started. So I was like, huh, really? Like maybe this extreme amount of stress cause this headache because when I was younger you know I've explained this so many times I get I got headaches a lot and it was always stress related but usually they would go away once I was not stressed anymore 
However, I did realize that the stress can cause a migraine and then migraines last a while. And I'm also very uh, susceptible to migraines, not as susceptible, just the regular headaches. But at the same time, migraines are a possibility if the stress is too deep. And like, I'm not going to lie, that did stress me out because it was the choking thing. And I noticed that the choking thing was in full effect. So it would make sense why I would be so stressed out. But at the same time, it was weird because the next day, you know, I still had a headache. And I thought it was because of the water. So I drink like today I try to drink water, but I know I, I did remember that the only thing that really helps me out when I have a migraine is ibuprofen because I was texting my friend Anthony. I was talking to him and I was like, usually when I have a headache, it's because I'm stressed. And right now I'm not stressed about anything. And then I like I was trying to create things that I would be stressed about. And it was just false. Like it, it just wasn't true. You know, I could have said, oh, I'm so stressed about college. Like I'm not stressed about college. You know what I mean? I, you know, depending on the day, I might be a little bit more worried than other days because like, you know, some days I feel as if I'm afraid that people are going to be judgmental. And then other days I'm like, all right, I'm going to be unapologetically me. But that was something that's just a completely different topic. And I was not stressed about that. So it was so weird to me. I was like, why is this happening? So then I ended up, you know, once again, going back, taking the ibuprofen, going to sleep, waking up. Now I'm fine. Now I'm jubilant. Jubilant? Jubilant? That's so cool. That's that's funny words. I love those like big words. I used to say them shits all the time. My favorite word growing up was indubitably. And I used to say that all the time, probably starting in junior year. Because I don't know if you remember those Kawhi, the Kawhi Leonard video of him saying indubitably. And that was hilarious. And then I said that to my one friend, Georgia. I actually had her on the podcast. And she ended up showing me this one. Uh, fuck, it was Andy Samberg and Kit Harrington. Can't remember what it's called, but it's a tennis uh, mockumentary. It's so funny. Seven Days in Hell, I think is what it's called. And the entire time is just uh kit harrington is trying to be so elegant and he's just continues using the word indubitably and it's so fucking funny that's not the reason why i started watching or using it but that was one of the reasons why i just like started to find it even funnier because it's fucking john snow using that word so uh i don't know that word is just hilarious because it's ba it's synonymous with yes if someone asks you a question and you say indubitably that literally just means yes that's all it is and I remember my teacher, Miss Sackstetter, shout out her. I miss her. I hope she's doing okay, doing well. Uh, Alabama law, so she might not be doing too good, but I'm always here for you. Shout out her. That was a good teacher. I had her my junior year, sophomore year, I think it was. You know, I I liked her because she she always knew my potential. She was always one of those teachers that knew that I could have done better than what I was doing, and I was... I was a fucking grade A student. I got seventh in my class in, in high school, dude, out of 200 something people. I'm flexing. You know, I'm going to flex right now. I'm not going to lie. I got seventh fucking bossed up. No matter what anyone says, I might be an idiot. You might, I might say I look like an idiot. I, li I might speak like an idiot. I'm a smart guy. I am an intelligent guy. There's, there's somehow a reason why I could speak for an hour straight. I have something up here. Maybe not a lot, but I have something up here enough. You know what I mean? But one of those reasons was I never really challenged myself while I was in high school. And one of the reasons was because I wanted to wait until college to challenge myself. I get to college and I don't even feel challenged. And I, and I don't, okay, I don't say that in order to like flex, oh, this shit's too easy for me. No, that's not my point. It's just the only time I really feel challenged is is when I get too much work, but I'm not going to lie. College is all you pick your classes. So you're going to enjoy every single class that you pick. Even if it's a lot of work, if you enjoy what you're doing, I really don't think it's going to be that bad. That's why I don't think college work is bad at all. I had a lot of work my first semester, you know, not as much as the nursing pe like people. I've talked to people in nursing and they said they get like eight hours of homework a day. That I probably wouldn't be able to deal with. But, you know, I had a lot of homework, but I would always finish it really early. And I enjoyed the shit that I was learning because I used it in order to talk about that kind of stuff on the podcast, as well as just, you know, it's knowledge that you don't, I mean, you know, and if someone mentions something, you're going to, oh shit, I remember that. And then you're going to have a conversation based on it. Like every single piece of knowledge that I've learned or talked about is like, is still in my head. It just takes a certain amount to take it out. You know what I mean? 
And that's why I love learning, especially in college so much, because you get to pick the shit. That's why I never understood why people said that's not going to fly in college. College isn't so easy. I mean, obviously, I'm only in my first semester, but I really, it was fucking easy. And it was enjoyable. You know, I didn't take, I did not study. I'm not, I'm just putting this out there. I'm not saying this to flex right now. Like, obviously, I mean this like as a flex as in, you know, I'm going to promote uh, positivity and be happy about your success. But I'm not like saying this to say, oh, I'm better than another person. I'm saying that you can enjoy this as long as you have the right mindset on doing it. You know what I mean? I know that I'm going to enjoy something if I'm doing and I'm learning the shit that I want to be learning about. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And I feel like that's a flex because if you know that you are enjoying what you're doing, you should be proud of that. And you should say that to other people because once again, conversation starter, I don't want to say college sucks because then that might take the possibility of someone not enjoying it out of that. Now, is that saying someone who might not like it is watching this? Oh, maybe college is going to be good for me. You know, like, yeah. You want the honest answer? Yes. But at the same time, like I'd rather promote a possibility of success than a possibility of pessimism. Like I've done, I, you know, I get it. I really do. I've had my pessimistic, uh, turns in my life where I've like always looked at someone as negative and I've just always been a hater and I'm not gonna lie having that thought process is so fucking draining to the point where if you're just if you look at shit positive it's so much more less energy that you have to take out of your day because back on to you know my friend Q I used to fucking hate Travis Scott. I used to hate Post Malone. I used to hate Gary V. And I haven't done an episode of Audio Chumps with Q in forever. I love Q. I just haven't done it with him because we have different mindsets to the point where I'm like, I'm going to address this. We have different mindsets to the point where we don't always have the best podcasts in order to give them to other people because like the way that we think, I don't really think is perfect for podcasts, even though we're still great friends. You know what I mean? Like, I just don't think that him and I are very good recurring podcast guests unless it's a very long time in between because he's one of those friends that like if we talk enough we're going to argue with each other but we still love each other if that makes any sense so that's that's one of the reasons why I haven't done uh, audio chumps episodes in a while but I didn't hate on Travis Scott and all of those because of him it was just things that he liked that I also did not like but I I took time out of my day and I was like you know what I'm going to try and stop being a hater and I'm going to try and find something that I enjoy about this dude and I'm going to actually sit down, relax and listen to this music. So I sit down, listen to rodeo and I'm fucking turning up and I'm like, what the hell? Why, why was I hating so bad? And it's like when you have this mindset on something and you believe it, if someone gives you any sort of like, I don't know what the word would be, but you know how when someone says that an album's bad before they listen to it, and then they have this inclination to think that the album's going to be bad before they listen to it, that's, I fall victim to that a lot. Like, for example, it's almost as if a doctor, I'm going to get fucking psychological on y'all, it's when a doctor says, oh, this is going to hurt, and then when you get it, it hurts more, but if they say this is not going to hurt, you're going to be fine. You know what I mean? It's the same thing, you know, when someone in power tells you to do something or someone in power says something to you, it's going to be more likely to happen in your brain because of whether it's confirmation bias, whatever it is. You know, I'm bringing out these big ass terms. Round of applause to me. Give me that fucking shit. I'm proud of myself. But at, other than that, you know, I finally took time out of my day and I got to thank my, uh, my sweet mate Ryan because he was the person who kind of put me on a Travis Scott because he played a spy fall and with a uh, with young thug and when you know okay let's be honest when you listen to songs with your favorite artists you automatically kind of like the other artists you know i loved lil uzi and he had songs with shy glizzy where i would never listen to a shy glizzy song in my life and then i listen to him I'm like whoa this guy's not that bad but then there's other times where it's like okay i'm just not going to listen to this regardless because the other artist is just not for me for example 420 in london and pressa you know i just no matter how much I listen to that song, I will not like Pressa's verse. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to take my time out of my day to listen to Pressa. And then there's other songs like Scoliosis on Young Thug's album. I love that song. Even Lil Double O makes me laugh my ass off every single time I listen to that song. Because the way that he comes on to that song just fucking makes me die. 
You know what I mean? Little double low man. Like that shit is so funny to me. But um, I just you know I'm not gonna take the time out of my day to listen to double little double low. Maybe if I'm not doing shit, I might. But I just like I cannot do that. He's probably good. I'm not gonna lie. And just because I've made this fucking episode, I'm gonna listen to little double low, and I'm gonna mention. I'm gonna say what I think of him next episode. But other than that. I mean, another example would be, um, fuck, there was someone that I did not like, not Post Malone, not Travis Scott, Frank Ocean. I mean, I didn't, I've never listened to like a Frank Ocean song in my life. And I'm just saying, I, I just don't fucking like this dude. And then I finally took my time out of my day in order to listen to him. And then I listened, I listened to it once. I listened to, um to blonde once and I didn't like it and then I decided to listen to it again and then that was when I started liking it and I was like what the fuck and then now it's one of my favorite albums of all time I literally have it as a poster on my dorm room you know what I mean so as long as you just have a different mindset about the things that you're going to do you're probably going to like it more I'm not gonna lie and back to the whole hater thing like I I used to be the biggest hater of Gary V and I still I'm not going to lie I still don't really like that entrepreneurship bullshit but I'm probably only saying that because they're successful. Let's let's not lie here. If I see someone that is more successful than me in this field that I like to do. I like entrepreneurship. I resell, I do all that kind of shit. But if I see someone that's more successful in that than me and I know that I can be on their lines if I actually apply myself, but I'm not and they're doing it, I'm obviously going to feel some sort of jealousy. And that's just that just comes. That that just comes, okay? And when that comes with it, you have to understand why that is happening and once you come to the conclusion that you say okay i am jealous for this exact reason that is growth and then when you accept that and you realize that that is happening you can become a better person because of it so rather than me having this you know negative perspective on gary v and never deciding to uh to like him i said fuck it you know what i'm gonna stop being a hater and i'm gonna watch a couple of these videos with no whatever that is, pass progression, pass whatever the word would be at him. And I started to listen to the word that he said. And I was like, he's doing the exact same thing that I would do if I was in his position. Regardless of him trying to sell the shit that he wants to sell to make more money, he's saying the shit that made that made whatever work for him. Now, you can listen to him say, you have to lie in your bed and imagine your family dying for five minutes straight and I cry every single time that I do it like you can do that and you can mentally scar yourself or you can do that and that'll actually fucking help you he's just doing what works for him now could he say this might not work for you but this will work for me or work for some people yes but I've noticed when you do that you kind of take a little bit away you kind of take a little bit of oomph away from your message. Like you take a little bit of positive energy away from your message rather than just ramming it forward. And it like, it creates this, um, okay, well it creates doubt. You know what I mean? And the entire entrepreneurship thing is all about, well, if you have doubt, you're going to fail. You know what I mean? So I, I get it. I really do. I really do get it. And no matter how much I disagree with that kind of shit, like they are right. And it, it, that kind of pisses me off because but what annoys me the most about that is like I feel as if it's always the exact same um, messages all over and over and over again. It says, oh, uh, I mean, even my dad said something to me the other day and I was like, yeah, obviously, you know, and I don't mean that to be a dick, but it's like, yeah, I've heard this many times before. But when, when someone in a place of power tells you something, it, it kind of makes sense. And then when they can relate to you, then it's kind of cool. So, I mean, my dad, I don't, I can't remember what we were talking about, but he was like, time heals all wounds. And I said, yeah, like, obviously, I know this. But, and I wasn't saying, yeah, obviously, I know this in a dick way. But like, I was like, yeah, of course. You know, I'm just responding to that in a different type of way i respect the words that he said and i agree with him i'm just saying that for camera's sake yeah obviously you know what i mean so then i then i was like 
Well, you have to think when there are certain terms and certain uh, messages that just keep on going and going and going through time, don't you think there's probably a little bit of proof? That just pissed me off. Not really. I'm not actually that mad. But yeah, I mean, there's got to be some sort of truth to something that has lasted so long. It's over 40 minutes. I'm going to reset the camera and try to come back after Siri just blew my fucking flow away. All right, I'll be back. Sorry about that. I went to go to the bathroom and then went to drink some water, even though I have water right by my feet because I'm an idiot. That's what I meant to grab. I meant to go grab Burt's Bees. Burt's Bees is the only chapstick that I can actually use. I have five I have five Burt's Bees because I bought one of those packs of four, and then I had an extra one because I had another pack of four that I bought in the past because I cannot keep a thing of Burt's Bees for my life, or I just can't keep a thing of chapstick for my life. So I remember I took a I took a pic of my five Burt's Bees, put it on my story, and I was like, this is literally a down payment for a car, and someone slid up and made a joke about it. I can't remember what it was, but it made me laugh my ass off. But Burt's Bees, I don't know what it is about that, but it's definitely the best chapstick for me because I I do know that I think it's Carmex and then the actual chapstick brand. I'm gonna go into something else. I'm gonna go into something else after I'm done with that. But I've noticed that those make you need more lip balm. And when you need more of it, you just continue using more and more and more and more. And then I end up losing it. And then I'm going to, and then when I lose it, I fucking need it terribly. And then I have to go out of my way in order to buy it. Even though I don't mind driving in order to buy, I fucking love buying things. So I don't even mind buying the Burt's Bees in the first place. But dude, I love Burt's Bees. Other than that, I've noticed, I, I noticed this when I was younger. Okay. Chapstick is just the brand. It's lip balm. So you're just using lip balm, but everyone uses the word chapstick. Oh, can you get me a chapstick? Regardless of what the actual lip balm is named. So you see a thing of Carmex. I mean, a lot of people just call Carmex Carmex. But if you see any sort of brand that isn't like Carmex, then people are going to say, oh, can you hand me the chapstick? Even though it's a thing of Blistex. Same thing with Band-Aids. A Band-Aid is just a brand. But a lot of people call it a band-aid. It's an adhesive bandage. But I'm not going to go out of my way when I see something. Can someone hand me an adhesive bandage? Can someone hand me a bandage? No. Can you hand me a band-aid? You know what I mean? How do people get such monopolies in wording that they literally get, that they everyone calls them fucking chapstick or band-aids? That is insane to me. I don't know why that's so crazy to me, but that's fucking insane. That's cool because I've never heard anyone say, yo, can you pass me your, like, a adhesive bandage. No one says that. Can you tell me the last time that someone said that to you? No, you can't because no one does that. But what I learned, I was researching a little bit uh, one time and I saw that in, I think it's the South, they call all soda Coke. So no matter whether, if it's a dark soda, they will call it Coke. They're not going to call it Pepsi, they're not going to call it Dr. Pepper, they just call it straight up Coke. And then other people call it Pop and that kind of shit, which I think is funny. I think Michigan calls it Pop because, you know, I've obviously been listening to a lot of uh, Flint, Michigan rap and whatnot, and they all call it Pop. Like, I've heard Baby Tron say it in a ton of uh, his lyrics. But I'm going to, it always ends up back at Baby Tron or always ends up back at Michigan with me. I've been listening to some Michigan rap. You know what? We're going to keep on going. We're going to go right back to what we were talking about. I noticed I was listening to or when you listen to an artist that you like, you hear other people on their music and you're like, wow, this guy's actually kind of good. So I listened to Michigan Boy Boat a lot and I fucking love that album. And there was one artist that was on there that I liked, but I never listened to his actual music. And I still haven't really listened to his actual music yet, but I listened to more of him and I've decided that he's really up there with Baby Tron because they say, I mean bullshit i mean actual like drawl shit insane kind of stuff that they are saying and i'm like how are you not canceled how do you still have a career 
They, oh my God, like RMC Mike and Rio the Young OG. I was listening to Dumb and Dumber uh, 1, 2, and 3, and I was texting my one friend Saeed back and forth, back and forth, and we were all sending each other lines, and we were just dying reading the shit that we were sending him. I'm going to have him on a, a podcast one day. And, dude, like, Baby Tron says really stupid shit, and it's just, you know, punchlines and that kind of stuff, which is hilarious. I love the guy. But then you listen to RMC Mike and you listen to Rio de Young OG and they say like, oh my God, you just said that on a song type stuff. Like there's this one line and he says, she killed more people than me. She has 12 abortions. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. There was another one. There's one I can't say, but then, yeah, that, that was questionable. I'm not going to say that one. But then there was another one that was like, um, you know, I, I just listen to him for yourself. Every single song that he has has at least one draw line in it. And then if you listen to him, if you're listening to me, listen to one of his songs and just send them to me. I love the song um, Fine With That, Dumb and Dumb and Three. You know, we had to do it. Mike to my pill and we got he got a pill for me. So we not into it. Uh, that song's hilarious. The one thing that I like about RMC Mike, though, is, uh, I feel as if over time, he just, his voice just get, keeps on getting deeper and deeper and deeper, and I don't know how it's healthy to speak with that, uh, high, or with that low of a voice. That's gotta hurt your fucking voice, but, like, there's no way that that does not hurt to speak, because he talks like this. like, he talks like that. Bitch pussy deeper than a friend, I'm to it. Popped the perk 30 last night and took a lot of music or whatever it is. Like, I feel like that actually sounded kind of good, bro. I cannot, I cannot understand that. But I mean, I was listening to Flint Tan. I was listening to ghetto boy shit and his voice over time has gotten deeper. And I think he says, cause he smoked Newports or something, which is just fuck. That's such a, that's, that's RMC Mike right there. I love that guy. Um, but yeah, Ghetto Boy shit is one of my favorite songs. I remember one time we were, it was uh, me, Cy, Anthony, Hunter. These are all people I've had on the podcast before. And I think it was, we were at the Lizzo concert at Firefly. And we just started going bar for bar saying every single line in Ghetto Boy shit. And like, I would say one, Hunter would say the next one, Cy would say the next one. And it was so funny to me. That was, that's a core memory while growing up and then like side did something that made me die and he was like we was at the lizzo concert and you've ever seen where people you know are trying to collect the spirit bomb but nah he was doing a reverse spirit bomb where he had his head down and his arms out and it was just like he was breathing in all of just like the lizzo concert that shit was so funny to me every single time i just like I automatically do that now if I hear or if I'm in any situation where the music is just, you know, filling up my body. I don't know how to describe it other than that. Like if I'm in a extreme level of comfort, bro, head down, arms up, bro. I, ugh, that shit's funny as hell. Fashion. Fashion is one of those things that it's like I I do want to get into and I I'm starting to get back into it. Because I mean, I love to clothes. I love clothes. I love to buy clothes. But it's one of those things that it takes your money away fast, and I I always forget that because like I'll go to the mall and I bought this shirt and a couple other things, and I look at my bank account and I'm like, what the fuck? Where did that money just go? And then I'm like, oh, it's in my closet now. And then one thing that I noticed as well was. My shoes, you know, I used to be a really big sneakerhead when I was younger. I always had Jordans or whatever. Not saying, you know, that doesn't make you a better person, but I just, I always like to flex some nice shoes. If I saw a cool pair of shoes that were not reselling type shoes, like $400, $500 shoes, I wanted them. Um, As long as they were in the margin of money that I wanted to spend. So, you know, I, but I kind of got out of that because I had plantar fasciitis in my left foot, which is, um. if anyone doesn't know, inflammation in, in your midfoot. So every single time, if I walk with the wrong shoes on, it feels as if someone's poking me with a needle in the middle of my foot or stabbing me with something in the middle of my, middle of my foot. I don't know if you can get surgery on that or if I can go somewhere and they can get me like an insert in my foot. 
or an insert a sole to put in my shoe. But I do know that like I've tried insoles, Dr. Scholl's and stuff, and that just does not really work for me. It does for some shoes, but it's not perfect. But I do I do want to find out like how to make that better because I want to rock more shoes, but I can't because some certain shoes don't like fit or aren't good for my feet. Like I the the shoes that I can wear are basketball shoes and then Pumas. I don't know why, but Pumas are really comfortable and they work really well for my feet. But any sort of Nike shoe, if it's not like a runner, is just terrible for my foot, which sucks because I have this really I have a really nice pair of shoes that are orange, but I can't really wear them because they just screw my shoe or they screw my foot up. But I I had like I had a state of flow earlier today where I was cleaning the fuck out of my shoes. I don't know why, but today I had a very, what's the word? I had a very, let me let me look for exactly what I'm trying to say. It's actually becoming light outside. It's seven o'clock in the morning right now. Um, wow, first of all. But I had one of those very productive days, but I didn't do anything, if that makes any sense. So, I like ordered stuff that I knew I was going to need. Like I had to order a mattress or I had to order one of those memory foam mattresses with a mattress cover. And then I got air tags too, which are really convenient because if I lose my wallet, if I lose my keys, I didn't realize how loud those speakers were. So if I'm in another room and I hit that, like you can still hear it. I don't have a good enough iPhone to the point where it gives me like the exact turn left, turn right, turn down, turn left, turn right. And then you're there or it's 10 miles or it's 10 feet away, that kind of thing. But I, the fact that I can hear it is enough for me because I cannot tell you how many times on a daily basis I lose my keys and I lose my wallet. I need to tell my dad to get them too because I love the guy, but he is, I definitely know where I get it from. Um, but other, other than that, back to what I was saying with the shoe shit, cause that was another thing that I was doing today. I was just cleaning the fuck out of those. I, I got into the state of flow because I had this shoe protector and, and one of my shoes was fucked. And I was like, all right, I can't look at this anymore. It started hurting me. Like, it, you know how when something that you love so much just absolutely falls apart and you just cannot deal with what it is at the moment, so you just have to do something to fix it? That's what it was with the shoe. So I'm looking at the shoe and I'm internally crying. So I was like, oh, I have shoe cleaner. So I go out and I clean this shoe and then I'm like, let's go. And then I start thinking every single shoe in my closet is dirty. So then for 30, 45 minutes, I'm just scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing more. Scrub, 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 scrub. And then I go eat and then I do something else. And then that's that's my day. I go. I went to visit Anthony at Duncan. It was nice. It was nice to see him because I haven't seen him in a while because I usually visit. I try to see him like every couple days or whatever because he's always my, uh, what's the word? He's my sane. He's my like sane level you out kind of friend, if that makes any sense. Like he's always the person that is always positive. I've said this in many episodes before, but he's always a person that is very positive, very sane. Every single time I talk to him, not going to say I was stressed or anything, but he makes me feel like a normal person. So it's just like a, all right, you're down back to earth after you speak to him. So I always try to see him a couple days a week or not a couple days, like every few days or whatever. So I saw him at Duncan and then, cause I haven't seen him for a week because I went to Kentucky. So then I did that. Went to go get something to eat. Yo, I tried the, uh, I'm going to finish this up really quick, but just, you know, try to have an hour episode, but I tried the, uh, the Taco Bell. It was like hard chicken Chipotle something creamy Chipotle sauce on a chicken taco. Yo, that shit was delicious. I'm not going to lie. I would try that if I were you guys. Just saying, just saying. You have to try that out because I was very impressed. And then obviously the Doritos Locos Taco is one of the greatest things I've ever had in my life. I like their steak quesadillas too. I'm a big Taco Bell fan. But other than that, I'm going to think if there's anything else that pops in my brain before I finish off this podcast. But I believe that that is where I'm going to conclude. And yep, nothing is popping in other than just some messages that I want to leave with you guys. And I just want to say that I love you. I love all of you, no matter what. Actually, no, I am not done. No, I've probably got another three, four, five minutes. I watched a few movies while I was gone. And you know how I am. I'm, oh my God. And then I got to talk about Euphoria. No, I'm not even close to being done. So I watched... 
the new Kingsman movie, it was good. I liked it. Um, I didn't really understand. Okay. I didn't understand how it was a Kingsman movie because, you know, obviously it's the beginning of the Kingsman, but it has nothing really to do. Okay. It has everything to do with the Kingsman, but don't watch it expecting it to be a Kingsman movie. If that makes any sense, like you're not going to see these cool gadgets and that kind of shit. It's just a straight up like World War One historical fiction type movie, which was actually really cool. I, I did like that premise a lot. And I was explaining to my dad because I'd learned a lot about World War One, about why Rasputin had mag magical powers and then uh, uh, Franz Ferdinand and how he died and whatnot. And he was like, oh, so that so that actually happened. And I was like, kind of. Yeah. Like, certain things are definitely very accurate, and then other things, you know, obviously aren't. But other than that, I watched that. I watched Wind River. Wind River was a very boring movie if you are going to watch it at night. It's a daytime movie, not going to lie, because if you watch it at night, it's going to put you to sleep. Not saying it's a bad movie. It's a very good movie, but the entire movie is just straight up build up, and it's a slow burn until the end, which is pretty good ending i'm not gonna lie it's very sweet i shouldn't you know i shouldn't say that it's you're going to be happy once you watch the movie at the end of it but other than that wind river was a good movie would i suggest it uh if you like slow burns and if you like serious movies i watched promising young woman holy fucking shit that movie had me like with my jaw dropped because you know i love i loved the premise of the movie like, whether or not she was doing wrong or doing right isn't the importance. It's just, like, the fact that of that plot, the plot of that movie was fucking insane. And Carrie Mulligan, I usually don't really like her because I watch Drive, and I'm not going to lie, that is probably my least favorite movie of all time. I hate that movie, and she was one of the main characters in that, and obviously, since I didn't like that movie i've already had you know some sort of negative opinion on her that movie completely changed my opinion on her she fucking killed that role plot i don't want to spoil anything but just the way the story unfolds whether or not you think certain things during the movie like is she actually doing this because she means it or all that kind of shit is she doing right is she doing wrong like it's fucking incredible. That is a movie that I would suggest to literally anybody. That ending is uh, that ending had me speechless. Um yeah, I watched Wild Things which is, you know, literally peak 90s movie cuz I was asking my dad, I was like, I you know, I'm a big movie guy, so I'm going to just try and watch any movie that I can see. And then that was just I, I have nothing really to say about that other than that's just peak 90s twisty twist after twist after twist after twist. I'm not going to lie. I was thrown off though. I, there was one at the end that I knew was going to happen, but at the same time it was like, all right, bro, you got it. And then uh, what else did I watch? The AFC NFC championship games. Football was literally incredible. That was probably the best uh, playoffs that I've ever seen in my life. Tom Brady retired. You know, as a Patriots fan, I was upset. But at the same time, I was kind of disappointed that he didn't say a single word. Tom Brady did not say a single word about the Patriots when he first retired. And then, I don't know whether it was because of the backlash. <laughs> oh, yuck. I don't know whether it was because of the backlash that uh, he got to the point where that's why he said, thank you, Patriots Nation. But, like, at the same time, I feel as if he still should have said something. And... I was speaking to a ton of my friends and I was, and they were like, oh, Tom Brady's going to definitely sign a one day contract with the Patriots. And I said, no, the fuck he is not. He is not signing a one day contract to retire with the Patriots. There is no shot. He is easily retiring as a buck. He, I, I don't think he likes the Patriots at all. I mean, he's definitely going to be remembered as a Patriot, but at the same time, like he won a Super Bowl with the Bucks, so he's not going to be remembered as a buck, but bro, like, He's just going to be remembered as a goat. That's all there is to it. I mean, I could say a ton of other shit because it's Tom Brady, but like, do I really need to say any of it? You know what I mean? I love Q, but Q thinks Joe Montana is the greatest quarterback of all time, bro. That's why I don't do audio chumps episodes with that motherfucker. Joe Montana, shut the fuck up, Q. I love you, bro. Uh, no, nah, it's like that. Nah. Yeah, that uh, that playoffs was the greatest I've ever seen in my life because every single game was ended in between one score. And I love, 
I love the uh, I love the Bengals. I love the Rams. But I think what made me the happiest was seeing the Chiefs get knocked out. I'm not going to lie. I'm not a Chiefs hater. But I think the reason why I dislike the Chiefs so much, so I guess that means I am a hater, is because of the same way a lot of people felt about the Patriots. When you see the Patriots in the AFC Championship eight years in a row, you're and you're not, and that's not your team, you're going to be fucking pissed. And I feel like that's how I feel with uh, with the Chiefs. After seeing them in the AFC Championship for four years straight, Patrick Mahomes just literally committing magic every single game. Uh, yeah, kind of it kind of pisses you off. Plus, Travis Kelsey's incredible. I don't think he's as good as Gronk. I mean, you know, he's probably had like a better overall career than him, but like, dude, Travis Kelsey's a fucking demon. And then Tyree Kill. I mean, that that team is just like to watch them play is just angering. I'm not even gonna lie, and it. it it's probably the same way people felt about the Patriots, so that's why I can't really hate that much. But to see the Bengals and then to see the Rams in the Super Bowl together, in all honesty, no one loses. You know, like one of the teams lose and then their fan base loses, but America wins. You know what I mean? Like either Joe Shiesty or Matt Stafford are going to get a ring. And it's like, how can you lose when that's the case? Jalen Ramsey, Matt Stafford, Aaron Donald, all of the, Von Miller is going to get another one if they do. Like, so many of these important players are on this, and good players are on the Rams, like, are going to win a ring. But at the same time, it's like the Bengals. You know what I mean? Bengals haven't been in the fucking playoffs for, what, 30-something years? And then all of a sudden, they're in, and they're in the Super Bowl? Or uh, It's 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 unbelievable. It's, it's a, one of the greatest stories of all time. And then Jamar Chase, like, that team is so likable. How could you—there's you? you there's neither team that is going to lose. In all honesty, well, you know, I guess, except for the team that loses. But you know what I mean by that. Like, if you're not a fan of either team, both teams win in your eyes. But, um, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm glad. You know, I'm very happy that this is the case. And I'm very happy. I feel like life is going really well right now. And glad the headache is gone. Glad I'm doing another podcast. I'm going to try and have this out by 7 p.m., but... I'm probably what I'm going to have to do is watch through the, I don't know if I'm going to, I don't think I need to watch through this in all honesty. I didn't say anything bad other than probably me cutting out the, uh, the one part. Well, I mean, obviously where I went to go see the camera, but yeah, I think that this was a really good episode. I'm glad that I'm back and I'm glad that I can do these again. And you know, it's important. I feel like I need to spread more love, spread positivity and just be happy with where I am in my life and keep on going from there. And I think that you guys should do the same. And if you ever need anything, I'm dead serious. If you're watching these episodes, if you ever need someone to talk to, if you ever need anybody, slide up on my Instagram, slide up on my stories, whatever it is, text me, ask for my number. I'll give it to fucking anybody, but I'm not going to post it on social media. I'm serious. I will gladly talk to you guys. I love to make people feel better, but you know, if, if you don't say this kind of stuff to other people, like no one knows that you might be going through some shit. So I'm begging y'all. Doesn't have to be me. Anything. Seek help, but don't mean it. Don't. I'm not saying seek help as if it's like a bad thing, but just like it is important for people when they're going through things to make sure that they're speaking to people that care about you. And I feel as if I'm very lucky because I have a close net of friends that I know really care about me and I feel as if everybody needs the same and if anyone needs help getting to that point, any tips on getting to that point or if you want to join my circle or whatever it is, just talk to me and we can go from there. But I just want to say I love you guys. Thank you everybody for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of shit. What did you like about this episode? What did you not like about this episode? Constructive criticism is one of my favorite things on the face of this earth. I'm dead serious, though. Anything that you think that I can do better, please um, comment and say something to me, and I really do appreciate it. Uh, just want to say that, yeah, thank you. I love you guys, and peace out.